Now there's another way to adjust audio keyframes, and that is up here in the inspector. So if I select the clip and we go to our audio pane, you'll see here's my volume and pan. And first of all, you'll see that change. It indicates the little changes. I drag across it. You see the little slider moving up there in the, in the inspector window. And if I park on one of these keyframes, you see this little orange thing lights up. That's showing me that I'm parked on a keyframe. And so if you were, I'm going to go to a second clip here just so we can make a little different changes. If I wanted to do keyframing up here instead of in the timeline, I can do that the same exact way, although instead of basically option clicking on the points down here, you click on this little, the diamond shape, which is the add keyframe button. And you see when you first roll over it, it just turns gray. Like it's not even there until you roll over and then it appears and turns gray. When you click on it, it turns orange. And that indicates that you've added a keyframe at that point in time. Then you move to a new point in time and you can go ahead and add a second keyframe. And once you've got more than one keyframe, you can navigate between them with these little bracket arrows next to the keyframe. So you see there, when there's a keyframe to the right, I can click on the keyframe that says, take me to the next keyframe. And now there's no more to the right, so that goes away. There is one to the left, though, so I can click the one on the left, and that'll take me to the one previously. If there were three, if I go forward in time to here and I add a third keyframe, now when I go back to the middle, you see I can go in either direction. So those little uh, highlights there indicate whether you can go to the left or the right to navigate to the previous or the next keyframe. And then when you're parked on any particular keyframe, you can adjust the volume slider to uh, change the volume of that keyframe. And that is pretty much exactly the same as dragging it in the timeline. When you're not parked on a keyframe, if I position my playhead somewhere in between the keyframes and I adjust this slider, what's happening is I'm adjusting the relative volume of the entire shot. So it's very different than clicking on the line in between two keyframes down here in the timeline. Up here, I'm adjusting the relative change of the entire structure. So over here in this clip, we've got this pretty complex little keyframe system. If I wanted to make a change to that whole thing relatively, I could raise or lower the entire keyframe system all at once. And you see, as I raise or lower that, the whole thing moves together. And you see those little keyframes at the top there, they're snapping down to the bottom. That's because basically there is a, a, it's a logarithmic scale. And so the further you drag it, the more dramatic the change is going to be. And while that may seem weird at first, in, in execution, it kind of makes perfect sense. And lastly, I just want to point out that those keyboard shortcuts, uh, control plus and minus, do work as well when you've got keyframes, but they always do the same thing as the slider. So if I'm, if I'm not parked on a keyframe and I choose modify, volume, up, I'm just going to do that a couple times. Control plus. You see the whole line is moving up and down. Control plus or control minus. If I'm parked on a keyframe, same thing. So even though I'm parked on a keyframe, if I do control plus, I'm not changing the keyframe. I'm changing the entire relative level of the entire clip. And those are your three basic controls for adjusting your audio level.